Okay, I messed up a little bit, but doesn't matter. B.B. Uh, King, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, blues guitar player. Uh, I try here to um, expose how I think B.B. would uh, solo over a simple blues in A. Um, it is a nice framework for everyone to learn how to play blues guitar from end to end. B.B. had it all. Uh, you, you probably noticed that this uh, section here that I played consists of two parts. The first part is what we might call um, uptown blues. It, it's more, uh, you know, mellow, sophisticated, with some jazzier tones. And that prepares the ground for the second part, which is more like gut bucket, emotional outcry. Uh, something that most people associate more with the blues, but B.B. had both sides. He was really a master of both the gut bucket, you know, Delta Blues, and also the uptown, sophisticated, almost jazzy. He had all the chops and everything like you wouldn't believe. People often think that, yeah, B.B. is just one of those people. But no, he, can, <laughs> he could play anything. And I've, I've seen and I listened to some of his recordings and he's all over the place. He's fantastic. Amazing musician. Not to mention one of the best singers and vocalists, but on the guitar, like he's something else. So I, I wanted to uh, use this opportunity to discuss a little bit about how I feel uh, a well-rounded blues guitar player should approach uh, this uh, genre. So as you know, the blues consists of three chords. It, this is the, uh, the root or the one chord moving into the four chord and then you know, moving to five back to one on the surface looks brain that simple and indeed oftentimes people are kind of uh, objecting and saying yeah well, what's the big deal three chords anybody can do it it's just like child's play but that is very deceptive because as i'll try to demonstrate these three chords are not your like old boring chords they're very interesting and they open up the pandora's box of opportunities and possibilities so we'll talk about this a little bit later i'm just right now going to discuss quickly the form which uh, typically you know we have like 12 bar blues which means there's uh, those 12 bars arranged between those chords and then we go back in this case i played 24 bar blues because it was uh, rep I repeated it, but with with more um, energy. And so this is blues in A, right? This is the the one chord A, and it goes to four chord D, back to A, and goes to five chord E. Okay. Uh, before I go into some details about these chords and the notes, I'm going to say that you probably noticed that when B.B. plays, he is uh, playing phrases. He's not just like noodling and, you know, shredding or just throwing lots of notes. He's very deliberately uh, trying to make it sound as if somebody is uh, discussing things. So even the opening line, it sounds like, let me tell you a story. Sit down. I'm going to tell you a story. This is going to be interesting and immediately you perk up, you go like mm. and then you go, okay, what's up? What's this all about? Um, after that, BB responds with a uh, almost like a, a, a counter phrase. And then he goes, elaborates on the first phrase. And goes even further. See, he's describing something, he's talking about something, and he goes... Like <laughs> Phenomenal. I mean, this is very sophisticated, and you would be uh, advised to try and learn this, because it's going to open up the fretboard for you, the fretboard, right? <laughs> So he outlines all the chords and all that. We don't want to go into technicalities here, but just pay attention how 
he's conversing, he's talking, he's telling an interesting story and grabbing everyone's attention. He's just going, not going like... <laughs> stuff like that. Boring cliches. Everybody says, okay, I've heard this millions of times. Let's move on. So Bibi is in- incredible in the sense that he can really... Um, set the stage and then of course in the second part he's going really uh, nuclear right and all these like um, real attack on the on the string master of both genres um, let's move into just quickly discussing the uh, from the music musical side of things, uh, meaning technicalities. Um, blues is, as you know, a different f- mu- uh, genre than, for example, uh, classical music or modal and many other forms of music. Blues emerged um, about 120 years or so ago as an amal- amalgamation of the Northern African you know, singers and black musicians that came from, that were brought as slaves, and the uh, Western European uh, music that was more based on harmonic movement. And, you know, if you look at uh, many Western uh, classical mu- musical pieces, Beethoven, Bach, blah, 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 um, you will see that they're all called or specified as being in a key of, uh, major key or minor key. So in, in the Western classical music, you either can go with major or minor. Um, what's interesting about the blues, it's neither major nor minor. So if it's not major nor minor, what is it? And the answer is it's dominant. And so what is dominant? So dominant is, um, you know, if you look at the harmony, you have the, your root note, A, and then if you climb up three steps, you can go one whole step and one whole step you go and then you go up to five you go this is your major chord if you want to go minor you go basically you go root minor third and fifth the difference is and that's it what is dominant dominant is when you add the dominant seventh interval so it's first major third fifth and then you go a flat seven that's dominant and for for D you go and for fifth Okay, why is that so interesting and sophisticating? Sophisticated is because it's giving us the soloists the opportunity to really mess around and play with major and minor. For instance, in the key of A, the minor will be this is C, and the major will be C sharp. So then in and even B.B. King opens with so from minor to major and you can always hear everybody who's playing blues flirting with those intervals minor major minor major stuff like that right so that opens up a lot of possibilities for being expressive you can fool around but also you can add different intervals. You don't have to always stay within the framework or just hit the root, hit the third, hit the fifth and seventh. You can also go with uh, other intervals and you, you've seen the BB King went like, you know, cr- uh, chromatic. We can go talk forever about these things, right? Um, so what I would suggest you do is maybe listen again to what I played and in the next maybe session I will break it down how I did it 
Uh, and then we can discuss about uh, Bibi's approach to um, choosing some passing tones and leading to the chord that's going to come up next, like what he did in, in the, anticipating the fifth f five chord. <laughs> So he was anticipating E, right? And then he goes into things like that. So for now, um, I just want to set the stage, set the framework where we are dealing with three dominant chords. And these are not neither major nor minor. And these chords will allow us, if we know what we're doing, will allow us to play pretty much anything you want, we want to play. Uh, it opens up the possibility for hitting many different notes that are not in, in, in that chord. And also, I want to draw your attention to the fact that BB actually, if you looked at this, BB never played any scales. There's no scales here. M most of the time, you know, people when they want to try to learn blues, they focus on, oh, you know, pentatonic, minor pentatonic, major pentatonic, uh, mixolydian, blah, blah. No, BB is not playing scales. Pay attention. He's playing phrases. And he's choosing the notes that he hears when these chords are moving, anticipating, there's a anticipation of some kind of a break, and he's throwing those phrases in, and it really flows beautifully. So instead of focusing on uh, too much scales, uh, I think it's even better sometimes to focus on understanding how are these chords moving. Have a little bit of knowledge about arpeggios and triads and uh, also double stops. And the rest is, hey, uh, whatever you hear, feel free to play. And you can listen to some really advanced blues players, modern ones. Um, and I even one episode with uh, Gat Guthrie Govan, where he explained very nicely that you can play any, any note on the fretboard if you know what you're doing. So I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But for now, maybe think about these three chords and how they move and also some interesting things when we go like you know leading to five but these are more like jazzier um, at the end of the the whole you know discussion I, I can say that even the most advanced jazz compositions are all rooted in, in this dominant tona tonality, pretty much. Unless they're like avant-garde or some quartal harmonies, but mostly it's all rooted in the dominant tonality. And uh, any, any note is fair game. You just use your ears and you listen and you learn from your mistakes and you come up with your own vocabulary and then next thing you know is you're playing the blues. But Studying B.B. King's uh, approach, I think, is the most fertile, the most uh, effective way to get there. And I would strongly recommend you go back and you get B.B.'s records and listen and listen again. And uh, you will you'll, you'll start hearing those things. He, you will hear how sophisticated he is. His note choices are phenomenal. His phrasing, his dynamics, you know, I, I couldn't play here not even one millionth of his uh, capability, but... To me, that's maybe a really good way to get, find your own voice in playing the blues. Okay, next time we'll go a little bit more into discussing the, the actual note choices and also the phrasing. But for now, um, keep practicing, keep listening. And uh, when you're away from the guitar, keep singing those lines in your head. All right. Uh, I'll catch you soon. Have fun. Bye.